Senator Melissa Lopez Franzen was originally elected in 2012, began service in 2013. She also has 10 years of service, total legislative days of 3,422. It's my honor to present Senator Melissa Lopez Franzen. Thank you, President Osmick, and thank you, and good morning, colleagues. I wrote my speech the day that filing opened. Well, a lot of you went to file. I needed to do something. <laughs> so I put my feelings to paper, I guess to a computer at that moment. Ten years ago, I was wearing this exact same suit as I walked into the chamber to be sworn in as the first Democrat first Latina and first woman senator from Edina, and I get a lot of grief for that. I remember feeling proud and honored to be amongst this elite group of members as the youngest member of my caucus at that time. I was told to learn my job, keep quiet. After 10 years, I look back and I admit that I'm still learning the job, especially this new title as leader of my caucus but I assure you that I'm not keeping quiet. That is why I was elected by my constituents to represent their voice. I remember thinking those first few years in the Senate that our state and our democracy was working, it was functioning, that our political leaders and parties were in check, that Democrats and Republicans could work together and did. Back then, even under a trifecta of democratic control, we respected each other. We heard each other's bills and we passed each other's bills. Yes, there were a controversial few. Marriage equality, minimum wage increase, an all-day kindergarten, and a union bill that debated a historic 20-plus hours. Even during these intense disagreements, we never shut down the debate. Even when we were held in the Senate chamber practically hostage, when only one member was able to attend the signing of the marriage equality bill, we still found a way to work together. <laughs> Members, I cannot in all honesty convey the same level of optimism I once had. I now feel a sense of immense caution for our Minnesota and the people who we have the privilege to represent. We as an institution are doing a disservice to our democracy when we seek power more than doing the right thing. When we see one another as enemies instead of colleagues and when we say things that our children should never hear. We must correct this at once. We must seek the truth. We must seek justice. And we must seek to do true public service. Everyone in this chamber and our staff, we all have made significant sacrifices to serve. I remember missing my grandmother's funeral my kids recital just last week, and uh, many of you, many family affairs. We each should remind ourselves once in a while why we ran for public office and what our purpose in this body is. My message to my 32-year-old freshman self would be to keep your chin up, remember why you ran, remember this is bigger than you, and that this fight is never over, even after a decade of service. I'm not over with my public service to the state and to preserve our democracy. It might not be in public office, but what I've learned in my last decade is that democracy is fragile, and if left unattended, it can be gone. That is why I will continue to fight for equal rights, for reproductive rights, for freedom to live in a place where our differences are valued and not silenced or eliminated. 
to my little boys, Philip and Arthur, I call them the Senate babies. I look forward to spending more quality time with you and being the mama you deserve. To my husband, Nathan, my biggest fan and my biggest critic, I look forward to our adventure together. We are indeed a team, and I would not be here with your unequivocal support. Thank you. Whew. I promised I wasn't going to do that. <sighs> the privilege to lead the Senate DFL caucus was what, not, not one that I ever planned, but that I am eternally grateful for my colleagues for your trust to lead you. I thank you to all my Senate Republican and Democratic colleagues, my Chief of Staff, Carly Moline, my LA Jess Gigane, and all of our leadership team, Mark Kimball, Krista Broughton, Chris Runquist, Selena Kostner, and Steve Peterson. Our staff, nonpartisan and partisan, pages, interns, the constituents of Senate District 49, from Edina, Bloomington, Eden Prairie, Minnetonka. It's been an honor to get to know you over the last 10 years, and I'm not moving. <laughs> and thank you to all the supporters from all parts of Minnesota who have been encouraged me to stay in this fight, and I will. And last but not least, to my family, to my parents who are watching from Puerto Rico, to my family in Little Falls, and to all, all the extra families that I've gotten to include in my own throughout these times. My time in the Minnesota has come to an end, but not my commitment to what this work represents. This is a place of ideas and hope. Let's, giving, let's keep giving Minnesotans hope that we can work together for a Minnesota that is welcoming, fair, and just. Thank you. Thank you.